There's nothing you can say that camp has done. I'll look at the right words. There's nothing you can sing that camp has sung. There's nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. There's nothing you can make that can't be made. There's no one you can save that can't be saved. There's nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love, 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 love. Love is all you need. There's nothing you can know that isn't known. There's nothing you can see that isn't shown. There's no way you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love, love, love. Love is all you need. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love, 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 love. Love is all you need. 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 Okay, here's what's going to happen today when you stand and sing. We're all going to rotate around the room so we can take turns sitting down. And the music plays, we, and whoever gets stuck without a chair. We are packed today. So if there is a seat next to you, or if you can sit in half a seat, I'm just going to leave that alone because that went too far. How about Wonderful Merciful Savior? Let's stand up and sing. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of man? Won't you rescue the souls of man? Counselor, comforter, keeper, Spirit, we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. You are the one. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. always hunger for oh, our hearts always hunger for Almighty infinite Father faithfully loving your own here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we are falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our 
hearts always hunger for. Whoa, our hearts always hunger for. Whoa, our hearts always hunger for. There's a lot of people in the room, so make sure you take a minute and look around and hug somebody's neck and tell them good morning. Come sit with me. seated if you've got a seat man there are so many people here today it's like it's like the snowbird bus pulled up out front and just unloaded there's so many folks I see that I haven't seen in forever I mean wow what a crowd people who need people are the luckiest people in the world all right, we'll move as quickly as we can today with our service, but sorry. <laughs> Man, a lot of people. One, two, one, two, three, four. This is a song called Your Love, O Lord, Reaches to the Heavens. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness is like a mighty mountain. Justice flows like the ocean's tide, and I will lift my voice to worship you, my King, and I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faithfulness, it stretches to the sky. Your righteousness is like a mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean's tide. And I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. And I will find my strength in the shadow.
your love oh Lord it reaches to the heaven your faithfulness stretches to the sky your righteousness is like a mighty mountain your justice flows like the ocean's high and i will lift my voice to worship you my king I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. up here we should show them right sure. this, this is the mardi gras funeral thing <laughs> yeah in the middle of the song i've got king babies up here i don't know Junk em, whenever. okay whenever just be be looking because they're they're about to fly into the audience all of you with scene problems and, and uh, close your eyes <laughs> one In heavenly armor we enter the street. The battle belongs to God. No weapon that's fashioned against us will meet. The battle belongs to God. And we see glory on her. Get with it, Billy. Battle and strength <laughs> to the Lord, and we see glory, honor, power, and strength to the Come rolling in like a flood. That battle belongs to God. He's raised up a standard, the power of that blood. The battle belongs to the Lord and we sing glory honor power and strength to the Lord and we sing glory
I just know I took someone's eye out. Did anybody get hurt? I didn't throw these because they look a little bit like Chinese throwing stars. It failed someone. If you're wondering why we're singing everything about an octave down today, it's because Mr. Sean D over here had a major cold this week. So now I'm singing like Barry White. Love. Need a little fried chicken for my love. love. Try not to do this in the mic. That microphone is all yours, pal. This is one of my favorite songs. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. Ooh, child, it'll be brighter. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, a little bit brighter. Someday, we'll put it all together and we'll get it all done. Someday, when the world is much brighter. Someday, we're walking the rays of the beautiful sun Someday when your head is much lighter Ooh, child, things are going to get easier Ooh, child, a little bit brighter Ooh, child, things are going to get easier Ooh, child, a little bit brighter Wake up, Billy. <laughs> what good is rehearsal? Now we'll pretend we got Joni and Bailey here. Can't nobody do me like a Jesus. Can't nobody uh -huh. do me like the Lord. Nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Yes, he picked me up and told me around how he picked me up and turned me around. He picked me up and turned me around. He turned me around. He's my friend. Need a tambourine, Tim. It healed my body and it told me to run home. Healed my, healed my body and it told me to run home. Healed my body and told me to run home. He is my friend. I say, can't nobody do me like a Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like a Jesus. He's my friend. I said, He's my friend. I said, He.
Here we are. George took the words right out of my mouth. Said, Sean must be on some kind of cold medicine this morning. <laughs> About a pot of coffee, you know, half a bottle of codeine cough syrup. <laughs> primes you up. If the spirit can't touch you, that will. I, mean, I guess that's what it is. Last week while I was in Georgia, I took my son Blaze by the house that I grew up in. It was the first time that he had ever seen it. It was the first time I had seen it in about 20 years. It is a little thousand square foot brick house, three tiny bedrooms. The utility hookups for the washer and dryer were right there in the kitchen. Any air conditioning that we had was a Sears window unit that stuck out of the window of the living room. Our heat were these electric coil heaters in each room and they glowed and growled like Hades late at night when they turned on by themselves. There was a small front porch, a stoop really, and unbelievably, unbelievably, one bathroom. Only one. Blaze said, how many people live there? And I said, five of us in a house half the size of the one you live in now, eager like parents are to show that your childhood was, is much better than the one I had. And I said, I never had my own room, and yes, one bathroom. But Blaze didn't see the inside, and neither did I. We didn't go in. We only drove by, pulled into the driveway, the gravel driveway, for a few minutes. Outside, the house itself was largely unchanged. The paint is a different color. There are still window AC units sticking out of a couple windows. I guess the yard is the same, but it looks so much smaller. I thought we had two acres of front yard. <laughs> I really did. Not only when I was cutting the grass. But how else could Shane, Michael, Zane, Tammy, Connie, Angie, Sarah, Elvis, there was a kid in our neighborhood named Elvis, <laughs> Jeff, Cotton, Jamie, Richie, and myself have all fit in that little space to play baseball every summer evening. And now the front yard looked about the size of a meditation garden. It was so small. And the players who played those summer games, Richie died in a farming accident the summer after graduation. Zane was killed in a car crash about the same time. Tammy died with a brain tumor a few years ago. Shane is in jail for manufacturing and trafficking meth. We all saw that coming years ago. <laughs> I couldn't tell you where the rest of them are. There was also a maple tree there in the front yard. My grandmother and I planted it together in the winter of 1989. It was a sapling, two feet tall, and we had transferred it from her farmhouse because it had rooted itself too close to the foundation. And we dug it up by shovel and moved it over to our house. And now, when I saw it last week, it was 30 feet tall, occupied all the space that used to be shortstop between second and third base and most of left field. There was a white German Shepherd puppy tied up to a pine tree in the back, a tree so big I wouldn't be able to get my arms around it. It was the same tree when I was a kid. I would climb to the top of it and get to the top and ride it down to the ground and at the last minute let go and it would snap back into place. It was surreal, nostalgic, and painful all at the same time to see it. But what brought the most pain was the condition of the rest of the neighborhood. Billy and Barbara Wilson's house, right next door, completely abandoned. The yard was well past overgrown. The windows were broken out. The roof was sagging. The Wilsons were living there when Billy died. He was a diesel mechanic at one of the trunking companies in town. He worked at night. He fell, up, he fell asleep at the wheel coming home one morning. Rolled his little orange Chevrolet Citation about 100 times, I guess. He came to rest not far from where... I totaled a car at 17, and where my friend Zane would die in his wreck as well. Bad spot of road. I felt so bad when Billy died because he was dead. And I had shot up his collection of antique Coke bottles with my BB gun for target practice. I didn't know they were worth anything. They were just laying around in the backyard. <laughs> and I never got to apologize. 
The house next to, next to it was the home of Miss Johnny Edwards. That house was in the same dilapidated condition, completely broken down. I didn't apologize to her before she passed either. I had shot out the window of her vintage Mustang with that same BB gun. <laughs> It'll put your eye out. But she didn't know it was me. Shane took the fall for that, and I can only hope that him taking the fall did not set him on the path to being in prison today. <laughs> Everywhere I looked, I saw the same thing. Neglected, deteriorating, run-down houses. I mean, the neighborhood was never park place. It was a rough place. Poor families, drunken fathers, pistol-toting mamas, drugs, rednecks, racism. In my 18 years that I lived in that house, I saw three house fires. One started during a brawl, one that turned out to be arson, I was an eyewitness to a murder, a suicide, multiple sting operations, and once hit a man in my bedroom because his brother-in-law was coming to kill him. It wasn't Disney World. Still, to go back and see half the neighborhood now as untamed as the residents who lived there once were, it was disheartening. What happened? Well, you know what happened. Everyone moved out or moved on. Only Mac and Ruth Thompson still live on that street. And homes that aren't lived in deteriorate quickly. If you are here in Florida for the winter, for a couple of months, a few months, down from Canada or Minnesota, you know that someone had better be looking in on your place back north because pipes will freeze, awnings will collapse, dust and debris will magically appear. And here in the Deep South, it's the same thing you better leave your air conditioning on if you're going to leave your house for any length of time or you're going to come home and there's going to be black mold over everything. The jungle will take over your yard. Critters will move into your garage. Rust will overtake anything exposed to the elements. If you neglect your home, fail to occupy it, everything begins to break down from non-use and non-attention. When everything goes to seed, it is usually a failure of vigilance more than anything else. And the same can be said for our hearts. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about the heart, not the cardiovascular system, but the complicated inner person that we are. I said then that if you were an alien come to earth and you heard all the different ways that human beings use the term heart, you would have no idea how to translate it to your own language. It's a physical organ. It is courage, it is strength, it is emotion, it is spirit, it is intellect, it is mind. It seems to be everything. And when you read the Bible, the Hebrew and Greek writers do the same. We understand the physical nature of the heart and its importance. Our heart is our life. Without it, we can't live. That's why we take our fish oil and our niacin and our statins and our cardism and our Lasix. Lop off a few other organs and you can make it. Give up even a lung or a kidney. You'll live. Without your heart, there's no life. And there are other aspects that are just as important. The emotional, spiritual, and moral particulars of our hearts. The heart feels. The heart desires. The heart thinks. It remembers, it understands. In biblical lit literature, it is sometimes indistinct from the mind. In the Bible, the word brain is never used. That's a Western concept where all of our thinking and all of our, our, our processing is done here, but for the biblical writers, it was here in the core of who we were. A large part of what makes us created in the image of God is the fact that we have a heart, that we are capable of emotion that we are capable of ethics and morality bound up in this nucleus we call the heart. The Hebrew word for heart means to and fro, like an engine that is turning, and that is so accurate. The Greek word cardia, where we get cardiovascular, is from the root word in the Latin of core. It is the core of the person. It is the center. It is the essence of who we are. And fail to protect your heart let it suffer from non-attention, non-occupation, and it will collapse in a great heap of worthlessness.
That's the warning of our text today from Proverbs chapter 4. My son, the writer says, or my child, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Now the writer here is trying to smarten up his dense child, probably a teenager, <laughs> saying things like, pay attention, listen up, I've been there myself, this is for your well-being, not mine, I'm not wasting my breath. Not that I know anything about such phrases. <laughs> and then he says this, Proverbs 4.23, Above all else, that is, if you don't hear anything else I say, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. There's this medicine you might give your dog every month. If so, you probably have to hide it in a treat like we do, because dogs tend to know when you're trying to get something over on them. Better than humans sometimes. <coughs> Great bumper sticker I saw the other day, the longer I live, the more I like dogs and the less I like people. There's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> this medicine's called Heart Guard. For all the crazy names for medications in the world, veterinarians and doctors alike, here's a medication by its name that makes sense. It vaccinates and prevents your dog from getting heartworms. The heartworms are little larvae that fly around on the back of a mosquito, and they land on your dog, and the larva jump off, and they get into the bloodstream of your little pup, and they go straight to the heart, and over time, a heartworm can grow to a foot long and block all the arteries of the heart. Give your dog his heart peel. You live in Florida. Heartworms grow every month. Give it to him. It will guard his heart. It will protect him. It protects the engine. Heart guard. What a great rendering of Proverbs 4.23. If only there were a pill to protect our hearts, but there's not. Neglect it and it will be the end of you. And I'm not talking about high concentrations of LDL cholesterol. I'm talking about our emotions, our spirits. We have to live within the space that God has made for us. I mean exactly that. Occupy that space. Live there at the center of who God has made you. Don't go chasing after other things. In other words, tend your yard. <coughs> Trim the trees. Make the necessary repairs. Mend the gate. Stop the woods from taking over. Replace the broken windows. See, you are stuck with you. You have to live with you. You can run and chase after other things. You can move up, move out, and move on. You can try to numb your mind or stay so busy you don't have the time or the energy to think. But at the end of every day, you have to come home to you. And you will not be a very pleasant place to be if you haven't taken care of the space that God has given you. If your heart looks like bombed out Beirut, if you have given your soul over to the kudzu and the weeds, if the dust and mold within you are a foot thick because of neglect, if the cockroaches and the cobwebs have taken over the joint, I wouldn't want to live there either. And we wonder why we're so discontent with ourselves sometimes. We've let our hearts go to seed. There's so many unhappy people and I think when it gets right down to it, that's the core desire of most folks. They want to be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. It's how we try to achieve it that wrecks us. So we go chasing after anything and anybody that flips the bliss switch. But it won't help. They have experienced, we have experienced sometimes, <coughs> heart failure. We have no center. We have no core. Where we live has fallen down and we are incapable of being happy anywhere else or within, with anyone else because we're not happy with ourselves. 
if you have let your heart and soul hit the skids, how can you be happy occupying a space like that? And how can anybody else be happy occupying a space like that? Chris Hurst is a friend of a friend. He is a young songwriter in Nashville who's been through a lot in his 30 or so years, and I don't know if he will ever hit it big, maybe, maybe not. But I like his words. Here's part of an essay he wrote. It begins with a question, how do you break a heart? Do you crush it to pieces, shattering it? Do you puncture it, stab it, impale it, letting it bleed and drain itself? Do you squeeze it, choke it? No. How do you break a heart? You abandon it. Slip out in a moment of weakness and vulnerability when it has its back turned. You leave it lonely. Then and only then will it cry out in the night, weeping and sobbing, soaking you with tears. A heart cannot be crushed, it cannot be pierced, it cannot be gagged, it must be neglected, treated carelessly, slighted and disregarded. Then and only then will it ache from its core. How do you break a heart? You forsake it. Now, amen to every word. I'll only add this caveat. We think of a broken heart as something inflicted upon us. It's something somebody else did to us. And that's true. It happens. But neglect and carelessness and abandonment, we do this to our own emotional and spiritual health. We abandon our own hearts when we fail to take care of them. Our insides begin to look like my childhood neighborhood at 149 Baker Circle. No, that house was never perfect, but it was livable. It was a good home. People were welcome, even those hiding from their crazy brother-in-laws. And now the whole area is just trashed. Nobody did anything to it, and that's the problem. Nothing is done. And when nothing is done and we're not on our guard, we're not cultivating our heart, we're not protecting ourselves from bad thoughts and stinking thinking, as the AA folks call it, we're not shoring up the weak places. We walk away from ourself, and now we have what we have. And yet it could be so beautiful. I looked around that neighborhood last week and remembered how it used to be. And I know some of this is just childhood idealism, but I do remember. Miss Johnny Edwards had the greatest flower beds, the ones with those giant snowball bushes. What are those called? Hydrangeas, thank you. I never know what they're called. Always a snowball bush. Now sometimes they were blue, but it was still a snowball bush. And she had a garden in her backyard that was a production plant. And her son would come with a tractor every spring and lay it aside. The Wilsons mowed their grass religiously every week. It was always neat. Miss Kinsey across the, park, across the street did the same. And she always had this old wooden swing under the shade tree in the backyard where you could retreat during the summer hot days. For my own part, my grandmother and I planted many, many oak and maple trees. I built a rock and stone walkway for my parents. I lost count of the hours behind that damn push mower. My kids now say, we need a riding lawnmower. And I say, no, we don't. I didn't have a riding lawnmower. Well, we need a riding lawnmower. No, we don't. I've got you. I don't need a riding lawnmower. And when you're gone, I will buy a riding lawnmower. <laughs> exactly as my father did. These were beautiful places, and they could be again if someone would guard them, work them, protect them, restore them, repair them. And no matter the condition of your heart, it could be beautiful again. That'll take some time, hard work. You'll have to mow and cut and repair and rebuild, but you could do it. You'll have to develop a little kindness, some self-control, some faithfulness, some fruit of the Spirit growing in your life. You'll have to give time to some meditation and prayer. That's like cutting the grass, you know. Keeps the jungle back. Focus more on the love of God and the presence of Christ in your life rather than what's happening on Facebook or in the news. 
It'll keep the windows of your soul clear and bright. Find some peace and easiness early in the morning alone rather than scrambling off to fill the day with mindless activity. It'll keep the cobwebs out of the corners. Learn to trust. Be on the lookout for bitterness and unforgiveness that will always root itself too close to the foundation stones and will have to be removed. Guard your heart because everything you do and everything you are flows out of that. A man once bought a ranch he hoped to enjoy when he retired. And he would take a day each week and go out and work his land. And it was a job. Acres of weeds, gopher holes, ant hills, run down buildings, but the man stayed at it because he knew the final outcome would be worth it. So he'd mow the fields and plant grass seed and fill the holes and pour concrete and replace the windows and the electrical outlets. And in time, the place really came together. It was a retreat. It was beautiful. It was going to be where he retired. A neighbor came by after all the work was done, a neighbor that never showed his face while all the work was going on. Kind of a devout guy, and he cast a long eye over the farm. Then he turned to his new neighbor on the porch and said, well, sir, it looks like God has really blessed you here. And the man answered, well, it's interesting you should say that because you should have seen this place when God had it all by himself. <laughs> God has given you, you. Don't abandon it. Guard it. Cultivated, everything you are flows from the space that you call yourself that God has made. May we pray together. As the psalmist prayed, O God, we pray, create in us a clean heart. And may, as Jesus said, good things spring out of the good stored up within us. Help us to cultivate the ground, repair the broken places, and guard properly the gift of life that you have given. In Christ we pray. Amen. We invite you to come to the Lord's table at this time. For those of you who have been standing, thank you. We, will, we are working very hard, and we'll have some updates in the days ahead about some long-term solutions so that there are fewer days like this, although these are great days. And uh, we'd a whole lot rather have standing room only than nobody here. And so thank you for coming, and we'll be updating you about that. Please come to the communion table. I can't get over And neither have I Wings to fly Just give me a boat That will carry two And both shall row my love and I A ship there is And she sails the mighty sea She's loaded deep Deep as deep can be But not so deep that's the love I'm in I know not if I sink or swim Go ahead, Ronnie
friendship there is She sails the ocean Though there be mist and fog But not so cloudy As I am blinded I know not where My love has gone This love is plenty, plenty where it grows. It grows and blossoms just like a rose. It is so sweet, <laughs> and it casts its spell on you. No flower on earth It can outgrow The water is wide I can't get over And neither have I Wings to fly That will carry to and both shall roll my love and I dark in here I feel so alone but there's a light that somebody just turned on it opens my eyes and lets me see and once again, it amazes me how your love stays with me when shadows fall and everybody. No, I'll never Because your love Stays with me When cold rains fall Against my skin It chills the body Oh, but not the soul within Cause I got a fire It burns so bright It keeps me warm Through the longest night How your love stays with me Shadows fall, and everybody leaves. I'm not alone. I know I'll never be because your love it 
stays with me. my skin It chills the body But not the soul within Cause I got a fire It burns so bright It keeps me warm Through the longest night When shadows fall and everybody leaves, I'm not alone. I know I'll never be because your love stays with me. As we, as we turn to pray, please remember Debbie Hannon's sister, uh, who has had a cardiac arrest this weekend. She's in critical condition in a coma, 52 years of age. And Debbie's husband and mother, Debbie's husband's mother is undergoing surgery tomorrow as well. So this, this uh, family is in great need of our prayers. Where did my wife go? Uh, stay there. You don't have to come up front and get in trouble. Uh, introduce, if you would, our last communion taker, fresh home from Afghanistan, I believe.
I didn't, I didn't mean to embarrass you. I, I would have I called your name, but I need some help with the pronunciation one more time. You, give, give me the last name one more time. Kervosky. Thank you very much. Uh, his two little boys lit the Advent candle uh, a few weeks ago. They, they looked like Dean and, and uh, Frank Sinatra when they came up here with their hats on. And they're back there with Dad, and we are so glad he is home safe and sound. Before he heads off to another job in Japan. He's a, he's a contractor with the military, so welcome home for a few days. Good to see you. So let's pray for them, for Debbie, his family. And, and, and we have an announcement before you leave here. But let's pray together. Thank you for letting me know that. Let's pray together. Take hands with your neighbors. Even those you, of you standing that didn't take communion and head straight out the door. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day, this, this day when so many are gathered here in this place. Thank you for bringing them here. And, and may, we, uh, may we be good stewards of the time that we are gathered here together and what is said and what is done be worthwhile to uh, uplift people, to honor you, and to empower us to live the lives that you have given us. For these prayer requests mentioned and called out specifically, we lift these to you and every burden on every heart. As Jesus has taught us to pray, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the glory forever and ever. As you leave today, you may be looking for your end-of-the-year giving receipt. Uh, some announcements went out that they were downstairs if you'd like to get them. Nobody picked them up. Susan mailed them, and then everybody showed up and said, where are our receipts? They're in the mail. So uh, they are on their way to you. So this is our offertory, and the basket's passing. And, uh, and the El Salvador trip coming up February 21st through the 28th. We still have slots open. It's about $1,500. Jeff Allen, Jeff Allen Jr., Jeff's a snowbird, Jeff is his son. Jeff is actually spending this semester of his elementary school year there working on a project. He'll still be there when we go down. Those of you that are, that are interested in going, please see Cindy or myself, and we will give you all the details. Thank you. All right, let's stand up and sing. There is more love somewhere, but I don't know how there could be more than right here in this room. So. We'll sing a long time. All right. First time I sang this song was at the Unitarian Church. Oh my lord. And I screwed it up so bad because I'd never sang it before. And they didn't invite you back, did they? They never did. I reckon I have too much Baptist in my blood. Yeah. There is more love somewhere. There is more love somewhere. And I'm going to keep on till I find it. Because there is more love somewhere. I said there's more faith somewhere. Yes, there is more faith somewhere. I'm going to keep on till I find it. There is more faith somewhere. Yes, there is more peace somewhere. There is more peace somewhere. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep on till I find it. Yeah, there is more peace somewhere. Now we're gonna sing a 38 style. There is more money somewhere. There is more money somewhere. Yes, I'm gonna keep building until I get some. There is more money somewhere. I'll take a solo.
Come on, Billy, give it one. Go home with me, Billy. Yes, there is more love somewhere. There is more love somewhere. And I'm going to keep on till I find it. There is more love somewhere. Take it away, Stu. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.